welcome back to Ultra Koi for another one where we are going to be progressing the ponds again today really starting to get on with it now um, you see there's the ozone unit which we covered off last time systems are running, pump, everything's tested, happy where it's at might do some fiddling with the level of that but other than that we're all good no leaks as well which is the main thing um, started to fiddle with the drum, we'll cover that another day today what we're going to be doing is looking at the plumbing for the air source heat pump and how I'm going to be running that. So I'm going to be doing that slightly differently. I'm running it on a separate line to give me the ability to fiddle and test a few different things when it comes to the air source heat pump, which I think hopefully you'll find interesting. Maybe we'll answer some questions. Certainly hopefully I'll answer some questions that I've got anyway. Just a reminder for all of those new to the channel who are discovering this for the first time today, what we're doing here. You are joining me on the journey where I am trying to give myself the ultimate grow on tanks um, and the ability to be able to test lots of different things side by side. I want to be testing different foods. I'm watching two sets of fish, how they develop, how they grow on those foods, as long with testing other methods of filtration, the heating, you name it. I want to test it. I want to see what's the best to give myself the answer so I've seen it firsthand and hopefully I can share that with all of you guys. So please do give us a like guys. Please do give us a subscribe, hit the notifications button, and join us on the rest of this journey. Anyway, well, let's get on with so, it. So, I'm going to be using this little 8,000 litre hour pump from my old reef system, which I don't use anymore, save me buying another one. Um, and I'm going to be using this in the vortex to pump water into the air source heat pump and then returning it into the same very tub to see if that causes me any problem stroke issues. So I'm going to be doing this in 32mm pipe, simple rubber coupler onto there, 32mm pipe, we're using compression fitting so I can alter this because I can guarantee this won't be the first or the last iteration. Um, and then put an NPS or heat pump and then return it to 40mm back into the tub. So that's what we're going to do. So yeah, let's get on. Okay, let's just show you what's going on. So I'm using the 32mm compression waste, that's onto that pump in there, at the bottom of the vortex. I'll put some egg grate in there for the uh, media to sit on top of, so that's nice and free. Um, I may even put a little bit of pipe on the intake to make sure that it's taking it from the clean area, not from the bottom. Well, that's a problem for a later date. So that'll be coming out here, outside the vortex, and there's the pump. Now, just to show us, rest that down, isn't it? nothing's fixed. Just to give you a couple of thoughts and considerations that I'm currently going through. Ignored this cable mess. This will be a nice, pretty, built-in, Auto tight cupboard from the controllers. So this pipe will be coming out, so it'll be straight, and that's got to go into the water inlet pipe. And that's fairly straightforward. Obviously the water outlet pipe, that needs to return back up to there. That's fine. The issue I've got, I want to run this inside because if I'm getting the hot air from the poly tunnel, it's going to be more efficient. Also, kind of recycling the heat that it'll be putting into the ponds, the water loses it to the air, the air source heat pump pulls it back in. That's my thinking. To do that obviously I need to exhaust that fan. The problem I've got is the water outlets are bang next to the fan as is the control unit. So ideally I would like to run a ducting pipe all the way down the side out and exit in the back of the tunnel so I can't see it and it's not in the way. To do that, I'm going to have to have a hefty bend this way, or face that the other way. Now facing that the other way, I'm not going to be able to see or get to the control panel very easy. As I said, this will be moving over slightly to make do with it. So what I'm currently thinking is, I've got a couple of options. The first one I just said, conjure it out, bend it round. The thing is, that's big 12 inch pipe, that's going to look quite unsightly and you'll be able to see it. The second one is, I run... 12 inch conduit from there and I just eject at the front. Again, all this stuff will be gone as we get the build more completed. Third option, very similar to the second one, is that I actually try and incorporate this build into this frame somehow and the frame becomes part of the conduit for the exhaust in air. And that bottom thing, if I try and raise it a little bit and build around it, will become an air box that keeps that separate from the rest of it and then the conduit will start there and shoot out. So I've got loads of things to think about. I'm not going to worry about that too much at this point. I just need to A, test it all works first because I haven't tested it since I picked it up from eBay. Um, so I'm just going to carry on plumbing it in for now. Check I'm happy with returning and taking water from the same thing because effectively 
if the water's not coming out quick enough, I'm going to be reheating the same water. So that's one slight consideration I've got. But again, I'm going to test all this and find out what works best. So that's the, the main aim at the minute. So yeah, just for those watching, loads of things that I'm trying to think about here. So any considerations, comments, any suggestions, chuck them down below. Always happy to read them and take them on board. I'm sure someone out there's got some better ideas than I have. Um, but yeah, all the things I'm going to be thinking about once I've established it actually definitely works and I'm happy with it on this take and return. So, right, let's get on with it and I'll cut back to you soon. Okay, so, test run works. We get the water through, we get the return going back in, so that's all good. Um, I couldn't film it because I was using both my hands to hold <laughs> these pipes because nothing's glued, I didn't want to glue anything. Um, like I said, I'm testing it and I haven't decided on the position in this properly yet anyway. But, in theory, it's going to work. So now I can really crack on with thinking about how I'm going to implement this. Um, if I left it like that, I've got to take some weight off of this because it puts a lot of pressure on that joint. But yeah, very pleased, very pleased. All moving the right way. Right, here we are. So I've drained it down. Um, so I can start thinking about how I'm going to have this set up properly uh, for the filter. So this is going to be a biological filter purely. Um, it will have a small sheet of jack matting on top just to make it easier, make sure I can cut the big stuff, anything that gets through the drum. But obviously, hopefully, anything will be sorted out there, mechanical wise. So, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using some of this egg crate. Um, again, this is just this one's from Aquadabra, loads of places sell it. Um, fairly inexpensive, I think it was £9 that sheet. And I'm going to cut that to the size of the bottom, bottom most ring where the water level is just above, so just below that outlet. And what that will do is give me the space underneath for any debris that does get through will just drop to the bottom. Hoping there's not going to be much, but obviously I've got a, a cleaning thing there. And then that's where the, the pump will live for the air source heat pump. Um, and then what else will be down there is it's going to be a static bed, but I am going to be putting an aeration ring in there. So this is again another Aquasure product. Again, I've got this one from Aquacadabra because I wanted to pick it up. Um, it was the same price, but you can get it from EK Filtration as well, um, and loads of places stock those type products. But it is just an airing made of that nice, permeable, weird material um, that's covered in tiny little micro holes, which gives you a good stream. Again, like I said, not a moving bed, not going to be. A, it's not a massive ring. It's just to provide some oxygen for the respiration that's going to go on in here to help with the biological filtration. That is it. That's also going to sit underneath uh, the 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 grid. And keep the the water and everything moving churned together what i also may do and this is what i'm trying to think about at the moment this is currently capped just to stop water when it was full up from flowing back down but this is the going to return for the slc pump i may run a pipe from here down near to there somewhere to make sure that i'm not going to be putting the same water always through but my thinking is it doesn't really matter because obviously heat rises whether it's narrow water so the hot water will always be near to the top where the cold water will always be near to the bottom and obviously it's got to go past the outlet as we go but these are all things we're going to fiddle with the other thing that I've got to consider and the reason why I'm doing this separately is to do with water flow through these now I don't know if you can see that but here 0.57 meters cubed an hour so that basically means that that's flight water flow rate needs to be 570 liters an hour which is a very, very small flow rate. Now, I've been doing some research and looking, and it seems a lot of air source heat pumps do have a fairly small flow rate through them, which don't really match up with our pond keeping. So I'm going to try and match it as close to that as I can, and that being on that separate loop is going to give me the ability to do that. Like I've said, ignore the position and stuff at the minute. I haven't decided where it's going. I just want to make sure I am where I am. But, yeah, so that's going to be the next stage. Um, I'm just trying to sort out some media which I should hopefully be able to talk about soon um, to fill this up with and I'm going to get it running purely on that media at the moment um, and I'll talk about plans and stuff to do with the Nexus but that's where I am for now um, I've got a couple of little bits to cover off including the giveaway and I'll cut back in a second so a number of you have, have asked in the comments and other uh, platforms about what I'm using to monitor the ORP when it comes to the ozone um, I said before I was looking, I've, I've tried all sorts of meters and I haven't found really any that's any good. So I had, this was the next one in line to be 
to be tested. Um, I think these retail for about 80 quid, these ones. Managed to get it a bit cheaper with your discount codes, etc. But I haven't tried it yet. It's, it looks quite fiddly when it comes to calibration, which is what I'm slightly concerned about. But that's one of them going to go. But I've also had conversations with Cactoily, who have provided this um, to test and use with their ORP. They really stand behind their products and think that it does exactly what it says it does and can measure the ORP accurately. So I'm going to put it through its paces with the new UV ozone. So between the two of them, I will be able to tell you exactly what I think, what I'm finding with these monitors and hopefully, hopefully I finally found, I'm quite excited about this, this CAC 27 in one, um, something that is going to provide the answers that I need when it comes to monitoring the ORP. Um, again, monitoring the ORP in fish tanks, you always should 100% do it, and I still would always recommend doing it on your quir pond if you're going to be trying to use ozone. Um, but what I am quite comfortable with is the amount of ozone that I'm producing in this water volume, in this space over a period of time that shouldn't ever be too much of a problem. However, I still want to know what's going on. I want to see what different things happen at different levels. So yeah, that will be in future videos we, we go through those, but just thought I wanted to show those now, show that it is coming. It's quite a lot lot I want to do at the moment it's just finding the time and doing it in the right order because obviously without any of that running I can't do things like this I can't do the food testing I can't do the ozone testing I can't do xyz media testing etc but bear with me we are getting there um, and I hopefully will get some more progress going soon right and finally here we are to the giveaway so this is the 750 subscriber giveaway we've hit that landmark so massive massive thank you to everybody who's come on board and supported and hit that subscribe button please do keep supporting us as we go forward and hopefully as the channel grows i'll be able to do some more brilliant giveaways as the time goes on as we grow um but this one for everyone who's been here since day one or to those who have recently joined us just a big big thank you for all your support so this is the mark to mark II ozone air purifier unit that we reviewed last year um, and I've been using it on the blue tub um, on my growing in the garage so those videos are available on the channel go and check those out um, and what we have today thanks to eco, eco filtration who provided this for us to be able to give away um, we can now do that so if you want to be able to win or be in with a chance to win this unit you need to do a couple of things first of all you need to like this video second of all you must be subscribed to the channel and then third, I need you to put a comment on, the, on this video saying hashtag Orchard Koi. If you do that, I can then take everybody's names out and I'll give it two weeks. So it won't be next weekend, the weekend after. And I'll take everyone's name who wants to enter, pop it into a drawer. And then I'll provide, there's an email address where you need to send me your address and I'll get this posted out to you. But this is brand new, unopened, ready to go to one lucky viewer. So yeah, again, just for clarity, give us a like. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel and pop a comment down below saying hashtag Orchard Koi. Cool. Look forward to the lucky winner who gets hold of that. That is it for today, guys. So um, I haven't as much time as I wanted to this week to be able to get on with doing a few bits. I've had a bit of man flu and all the rest of it, so uh, I'm back to work. So, yeah, there we go. In the next one, hopefully, I'll have... I still, I'm still thinking about what to do with this, so if anyone has got any comments, please do, do share those. Um, but yeah, I'll be moving on with that, and I want to do some more testing on the, the water flow and to see what difference we get on the temperatures. But we are, we are so close now, so close, so close to having a system that I can put fish into, and I really want to be soon because I want to do the unveiling of these guys in here. We've pretty much been living under that light and having them as much food as I can get in that little IBC. So get them moved across carrying them growing so they've got more comfort and i've got more visibility as well but yeah hope you enjoyed that guys thanks for watching thanks for taking time out give us a like and subscribe and i'll catch you all soon take care